pleasure to be here with you. I think these are critical gatherings for, for many purposes, but uh, you know, without the relationships you know, that we build in gatherings like this, we, we don't get work done. So you know that's true on all sides. I want to call out Larry Claypool, who's our Deputy State Director for BLM Wyoming, back in the back there. He does a great job. He was uh, just back from a trip advising the Mexican government on oil and gas policy. So uh, thank you, Larry, for coming over. And Cheyenne, in addition to everybody else that drove up, including the governor's representative who made the drive this morning. Um, so my name is Neil Cornsey. I'm the Acting Deputy Director of the Bureau of Land Management. The West is, is my home, and at least uh, in my heart. I grew up in Elko, Nevada, and spent time in Utah, Colorado, and Washington State for the various times of my life. Um, as Tom pointed out, I worked for Senator Harry Reid, the majority leader of the U.S. Senate, for uh, nearly a decade, and uh, learned an immense amount there. I worked on a lot of um, very fun issues, including including the Wyoming Range Act and the Energy Policy Act, 2005. Um, I've been at BLM for about two years, and, uh, and I think Tom put it well. Our greatest interest is making sure that the agency works for the resources that we manage and for you. Um, it's a pleasure to be here in Wyoming. I was doing a little research uh, on my way in and uh, appreciating how much Wyoming likes to be number one. In all ways, you're, you're first with a national park, first with a national monument, first with a grazing district, first with a national forest. Uh, you are first in oil and gas production domestically among the states. You are by far first in coal production, uh, very tremendous. First in Trona, first in our blessed sage grouse, and uh, always first in antelope. So uh, I'm sure I'm missing a lot of key. Key number one's there, um, but it is great to be here. You know, one of the reasons that I'm here is that, in terms of firsts, uh, you know, there are great opportunities to be first here in Wyoming when it comes to major transmission. You've got three massive projects that are being considered, Trans West, Gateway West, and Gateway South, um, in addition to smaller projects we're working on. And you also have some of the best wind potential anywhere on the face of the earth. And, uh, and that is something that we've been very excited to, to be a part of uh, looking at that as, a, as the future of American energy. One thing I like to do when I, when I give talks is to give a little bit of an introduction about what the BLM is. And I was in Oregon touring a, a paper mill and uh, talking to the owner of the mill and, and the reason I, I offer this part to most folks is because of him, because we had this fantastic conversation about how the, how the leasing process works, how the sale process works for timber. And, uh, and at the end, it became apparent that he thought that BLM was simply an inferior forest agency to the forest service. <laughs> that we just, that's all we did. We were just a pulp producer. And, uh, and so, I find it illustrative to kind of dig into the numbers for a little bit. So, so we have 10,000 employees nationwide. Uh, we are, have surface property in 26 different states. We manage subsurface in all 50 states. As far as total surface coverage, we cover about 10% of the nation. That makes us the nation's largest land management agency. In terms of subsurface, we cover about a third of the country. Um, not insubstantial. In oil and gas, uh, oil production on public lands is about 5% of the nation's total. Uh, natural gas production is up around 13%, and the majority of that is here in Wyoming. Thanks to your good work. We have 18,000 grazing permittees. We produce about 200 million board feet of timber every year, mostly from Western Oregon and from Montana. We have 800 conservation units nationwide, which range from wilderness areas to wilderness study areas to national conservation areas, national monuments, log sink rivers. Coal production, big part of what we do. 
one in every five hours of electricity in this country comes from Wyoming coal pulled from BLM managed lands. Okay. It's not a shock to you, but most crowds gasp at that. They have no idea. Um, we manage the, the nation's helium reserve in the middle of the country. We have our wild horses and burrows, the only species that we are specifically responsible for. We have just under 40,000 out on the range. We have just over 40,000 in long-term and short-term holding facilities around the country. Essentially, ranchers that we permit with uh, that are taking care, of, taking care of those horses once they're pulled off the range because the range has exceeded its carrying capacity. We deal in border management with Homeland Security. We have the National Petroleum Reserve in Alaska that we manage. And that is, in the simplest way to think about it, it's the western half of the American Arctic. 23 million acres. It's about half of the tundra in the United States. And uh, a very important conversation right now about what to do with that area. It's roughly the size of Indiana. And we're putting together our first comprehensive plan for that area. And trying to figure out how to, on the one hand, protect the subsistence, uh, which means sort of hunting, gathering, fishing, those rights and values, um, incredible wildlife populations, birds from seven different continents, from every continent make their way there during the summer, and, uh, and other incredible values like 400,000 caribou that we call it home. At the same time, we have oil and gas responsibility, and we're looking at how best to make the uh, leasing and development that will take place in the Chukchi and Beaufort Seas, how to get that to the trans Alaska Pipeline, in addition to onshore development. Uh, we have places like Imperial Sand Dunes, where on a busy weekend, we might have about half the population of Wyoming, uh, or the equivalent thereof, out with their sand dune, dune buggies, having fun. We also have temporary rainforests in Oregon that we manage on Mount Hood, and then we've got the driest deserts of the nation. So that's just a quick scope of what we do. It's a little bit of everything, which is a leftover, because we, we manage a lot of the leftovers. A big part of this nation was under the government land office and um, the nation decided that these lands would stay in our hands uh, roughly in the 1970s. We were left with a great estate in the West. In terms of renewable energy and the process, progress that we've made uh, in recent years, very proud of this in the Department of the Interior, that we've moved from zero to 60 in just a few years. There was no solar program to speak of at the Bureau of Land Management. There were 200 pending applications, but no, nothing had been processed or approved. Over the last four years, the administration has approved over 30 projects, roughly 35, that have led to the authorization of about 10,000 megawatts of energy. A big step forward for our nation, Big step forward for showing how public lands can be a critical part for a clean energy economy. We have also worked on the Western Solar Plan, also known as the Solar Programmatic EIS, with the Department of Energy and all of you. And we've identified 17 solar zones across the West, and those are the places where we have identified them as the, those are your go-to areas that are your fastest and easiest to develop. And uh, we've got some folks in the room here who have been working with us on mitigation plans for some of those, including the dry lake zone just outside of Las Vegas. And our goal is to make it just as easy as possible so that if you want to bring a solar project forward, you know the permitting timelines, you know the resource impacts, you know what mitigation is required, day one. And so that's our goal, to make it as quick and efficient as possible. We have just announced, the Secretary announced this last week, 5,000 additional megawatts of renewable energy projects that we will be processing and potentially authorizing over the next two years. <coughs> and the reason I lead in with renewable energy is because all those projects mean nothing without transmission. And so at the BLM and the Department of the Interior, we take it very seriously that the amount of energy that went into creating our renewables energy program 
is what we now need to put into our transmission program. It is the next big thing, as uh, one of my colleagues often likes to call it. It is the next big thing for unlocking our economic, economic potential and our energy potential. Since 2009, uh, this administration has approved, well, I should say the BLM has approved, roughly 1,600 miles of transmission lines. And we have about 5,000 miles of projects uh, that we're working on currently. We realize, and many of you shared with me, that we need to take our program to the next level. And that is something that we're committed to doing. And I hope that we can continue in a dialogue about the best ways to do that. I'll share with you some of the top level and medium level ways we're trying to do that. Uh, first, in 2009, there's a nine agency memorandum of understanding put in place. It's trying to bring a uh, center of gravity to the way that we work on transmission, to make sure that it's organized, that we're coordinated, that we're setting priorities, that we have a common process for moving through uh, the environmental process and the approval process. We have the Rapid Response Team for Transmission, the RRTT, and their priority lines, a number of which are yours. And that has been uh, a large success. It sort of uh, it comes and goes in terms of its activity level, but I think overall it keeps us all focused on this partnership across the federal government with our partners in the states, with developers, with tribes. In terms of at the Bureau of Land Management, we have a, a number of changes that we're working on right now. Currently we have five national project managers for transmission lines. We're looking to add three more. So we're in the process of doing that hiring. We're also doing something which most of you haven't heard of, which is the creating the National Transmission Support Team. We are going to pull, uh, we're going to bring on three new biologists, three new archaeologists, and three environmental coordinators, which will be based in the West, and will have oversight over the long distance purview of the large projects we're working on. Because right now, as you know, there's not been a major upgrade in the backbone of American transmission since the early 1980s or before. And so we have capacity that's focused on local projects. We need to kick that up to a global level so we can look all the way across the West. These folks are going to help us do that. They're going to help us bring the 17 archaeologists involved in one project into the same discussion, make sure that things are matched up and they're moving aggressively forward. We're also bringing in some, uh, some leadership within our minerals division and our rights of way division in DC with some senior advisors uh, that will help us work on the policy front of this, side of this. And we're also going to make sure that everyone who works on transmission has enhanced training over and above what we are providing today. So those are some of the immediate steps. In terms of policy, I want to flag just two things that may be of interest to you. One is we're working to bring together policy, a, a, a manual that talks about our off-site mitigation um, program and policy, how it works, it'll be the rules of the road for you, the rules of the road for us. When BLM talks about mitigation, it's, it's often hard to know what we're talking about. Are we talking about painting the, painting the poles the same color as the sagebrush? Or are we talking about acquiring private lands or doing habitat improvements? So, we're going to try and clarify that, bring it forward in a more clear way that we can all use. We're also working on policy that's going to make sure that as we work on transmission projects together, uh, we're going to ask you to come in and sit down with us for pre-application meetings. This is the same thing we've done with our renewable energy projects, and it's enormously helpful. It could be anywhere from two to four meetings, but essentially what it is is let's sit down and have a quiet conversation so that you know what we know and we have some sense of where you want to get. And which is so important in projects of the scope and scale that you all are committed to and are moving forward. It uh, puts us all in a difficult position when lines have been drawn on a map and, and sitting on the table and, and uh, it comes a, comes a dance to move things around around some of the more, more challenging resource issues on the ground like sage grass. So I'll say that going forward I think the landscape view 
for the Bureau of Land Management as one of our one of our goals. We are focused institutionally on field offices, district offices, states. And one thing that we're very proud of is that the that structure allows us to have very close relationships with county commissioners. You know who to talk to, you know your field manager, you probably know your district manager, governors, you know, like Governor Meade, I think has uh, Don Simpson on speed dial, as he should. You know, these are structured relationships, but because of that structure, it makes it challenging for us to look across ecosystems and across broad landscapes. So you, know, you take Gateway West, for instance, which runs from roughly Cheyenne to west of Boise. That is a big footprint. And we need to be able to have the ability to look, pull ourselves up without bringing everything to the national office, without running it out of the director's office. We need to be able to lift ourselves up see the footprint of that project, coordinate quickly and effectively for you so that you know the challenges that we face, the challenges that you face, and we can come up with some solutions. So, so that's our goal, that's our commitment. We see enormous challenges in this area, but we take them as enormous opportunity. There are a lot of jobs, a lot of clean energy, a lot of resources that we can bring to bear. And the amount of capital that all of you that are working on transmission lines are looking to put on the table is fantastic for our nation. We're talking about billions and billions of dollars, similar with some of the larger renewable energy projects. So, so we are moving at a landscape level approach. We're looking to take our transmission program to the next level. We're excited about doing this. We look forward to your feedback. And uh, it's an honor to be here. And we would not be here, we would not be working on these projects as successfully as we are without the partnership that we have with the states, with tribes, with your companies, with counties. We appreciate your time.